Uh, we'll start. Uh, first thing, we would like to thank you all very much for being here today. Uh, for us, it's super important uh, your interest and in listen about this methodology. Uh, as most of you already know, we are uh, working together with Brackman, uh, thanks to Otavio and Cristiani, uh, to make um, possible a dialogue between the stakeholders uh, in order to find the right way to implement and method to implement math in Brazil and have its acceptance as well. Um, this partnership brings together national and international experts from regulatory field, industry, and other organizations. And we are doing all this movement because we have this normative resolution of CONSEIA, which give us a deadline to implement this methodology in Brazil uh, by 2024. So from this partnership uh, work with Brackman, we have done some activities already. Last June 22, last year, we have done a um, technical seminar in the YouTube. It was an uh, open streaming uh, where Brackman has uh, presented us uh, Matt and its application. Uh, Otavio and Cristiani have brought to us some knowledge about this methodology. And this event was open to public and we had more than 100 views. So we were super happy with the interesting of people about this methodology. Um, in October 22, last year, we as a continuing um, activities from this partnership, we organized a round table uh, with regulators and industry in this time was just invitation uh, only and where in this space we were able to discuss a bit more in deep uh, this methodology and the Brazilian case and how we can advance to implement this method in Brazil and have its, its acceptance as well. In November 22, we were pleased to see that the Pharmacopeia has uh, officially launch its working group to discuss math and, and discuss a specific chapter uh, for this methodology to be included in the Brazilian Pharmacopeia. In this working group, uh, we are happy to see that Brackman is part of this discussion as well. Uh, in January this year, we have um, uh, done our first meeting of our own working group to discuss the specificity of MATCH and its implementation in Brazil. We had our first meeting in January, we had our second meeting in March, and now it's our third meeting, and we are happy to have our colleagues from the Italian Institute of Health. Thanks so much for being here, for helping us to understand a little bit more of this methodology and share with us your expertise in this field. So I'm happy to introduce you to Dr. Eliana Cotia, that is the research director of immunology, immun, immunology Unity at Department of Infections and Disease in the Instituto Superiore di Sanità from home, Italy, and Dr. Marilena Etina, that is a res resident researcher in the Department of Infection Disease at the Instituto Superiore di Sanità in home, Italy, as well. So just some informations uh, for our meeting. Uh, please me mute your microphone. And please, if you wanna speak something, raise your hand. And when you're gonna speak, please introduce yourself and please put your uh, questions in the chat that Dr. Bianca Marigliani will help us um, uh, during the question and answers. So, so I'm pleased to, to pass the word for our colleagues from the Institute uh, of- Superiore di Sanità. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I did a mix of English and Italian and it's not my, so please- I think that in, it, in Brazilian should be more similar. Easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easier, yeah. It, it is for sure. <laughs> Okay. okay, so Marilena. I can share yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, so good morning. 
everyone. And thank you for the introduction and uh, also for uh, the invitation to give this uh, seminar. Actually, we, we, we will spend together this couple of hours uh, of discussing on MIT regarding our experience and your experience on this promising essay. Next slide. Okay, so this is uh, the list of the topics that we will we'll approach in this presentation. Let's start with Piro uh, overview on the Istituto Superiore di Sanità. Okay. Um, the Istituto Superiore di Sanità, that uh, the abbreviation is ISS, is much easier, <laughs> is the technical and scientific body of the Italian Health Service located in Rome. The activity of ISS include the promotion and protection of national and international public health through different activity, moving, starting from uh, research, surveillance, regulation, and control. The technical and scientific area of the Institute include the six departments. Uh, I think that you cannot see my pointer. No, uh, uh, I think they will see mine. <laughs> okay, so, so you to... can go okay. back, okay, if you don't mind, Marilena, sorry. <laughs> okay, so six, de six department, six in national center, two reference center, and a few technical scientific services. At the Department of Infectious Disease, that is, that is composed of seven units, we are currently carrying out a research activity that ranges from the fundamental biology to the development of new approaches for the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of infectious, um, infectious disease. Next. Within the immunology unit, my team, you can see the picture on the right side, uh, is studying the host pathogen interaction to identify strategy used by pathogen to induce or evade the immune response. And we are also characterized the alternative experimental models to test in vitro the immunogenicity of vaccine candidate and vaccine formulation in accordance with the 3R principle. Next slide, okay. Within this context, we uh, have established a MIT unit to carry out the pyrogenicity testing of vaccine in collaboration with our colleague of the Centro Nazionale Controllo e Valutazione dei Farmaci that is translated as uh, drug control and evaluation. And uh, together we perform the uh, batch release of biological, including vaccines. This unit is composed by Marilena, that will be, we'll talk uh, soon after. Marilena is uh, the expert of our unit and Dr. Rizzo and Dr. Ilari uh, act as analysts. Okay, so next, let's move to the uh, pyrogenicity test in Europe to give you a, an idea of what is going now. Okay. The general chapter 2.6.8 regarding the, <clears throat> uh, the uh, pyrogen testing conducted in uh, rabbit is uh, cited and foresee in 60 text of the pharmacopoeia such as the general monograph on the substance for pharmaceutical use, on radiopharmaceutical preparation, immunosera for human use and animals, on general chapter as well on plastic and vaccine for human use, and specific monograph on parenteral and, uh, um, and uh, intravesical pre preparation, and for individual, uh, on individual monograph on solution, blood product, vaccine for human use, antibiotics, and other chemical substance. Next. So moving from the 3R principle the, that encourage the scientific community to reduce, replace, and refine the use of, of animal in research and testing, on September 2010, 
the European community adopted the directive that is cited here, the Directive 2010-63 on the protection of animals used for scientific purposes. The aim of this directive is to strengthen legislation and to improve the welfare of those animals still needed to be used for scientific purposes as well as to firmly anchor the principle of three R's in the European legislation. Since the application of this directive, the substitution of non-animal technology became mandatory in Europe. In Europe. <clears throat> Next. So to speed up the elimination of rabbit pyrogen testing, the European Pharmacopoeia plan to take several actions leading to the complete replacement of RPT within the 26, 2026. Next. This action implies that 59 texts covering a variety of topics will be modified by replacing rabbit pyrogen test with suitable in vitro alternatives indicating the test of uh, monocyte activation test as the best option for such a replacement. Some of the revised tests that are highlighted on the upper uh, right corner have been already published in Pharma Europe for a comment. Next, <clears throat> one of the major changes uh, that will be included in the, uh, is the removal of the general chapter 2.6.8 on pyrogenicity and the introduction of a new chapter uh, named 5.1.13 on pyrogenicity. So in addition to uh, bacterial endotoxin test, the other two tests, namely the recombinant factor C and monocyte activation test are considered for pyrogen assessment. Next. However, the replacement of rabbit pyrogen test uh, with the above mentioned alternative must follow a risk-based approach for the proper pyrogen detection method. This approach firstly considered whether it is possible to exclude the presence of non-endotoxin pyrogen in the product. If the answer is yes, the proper choice is a method that allows endotoxin testing such as bacterial endotoxin testing or its non-animal alternative, the recombinant factor C test. But if the presence of non-endotoxin pyrogen cannot be excluded, MIT execution should be evaluated. At this stage, we must answer to a second question. Is the risk of non-endotoxin pyrogen presence under control? If the response is yes, we can move to bacterial endotoxin test or recombinant factor C. But if the response is no, the proper method for the rabbit pyrogen test replacement is monocyte activation test. So this is uh, this few slides just to introduce uh, the, um, the reason why we were really involved in such a, a test because uh, uh, will be the future for the pyrogen testing. And um, so we, we are getting involved in such a test since a couple of years. And uh, we are actively performing uh, this analysis, this uh, assessment for few uh, viral ba uh, bacterial vaccine so far. So I will uh, mm, uh, ask Marilena to continue the presentation. Okay, thank you, Eliana, and thank you uh, for uh, inviting me to join this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, let's proceed with the uh, description of the MIT workflow and some uh, technical uh, uh, aspects that I want to underline uh, uh, that can, uh, uh, at the end of the seminar, uh, simulate the discussion. Okay, here we have the very first sentences of the chapter of uh, European Pharmacopoeia for uh, MIT. Um, and in these first sentences, uh, we can find uh, the uh, 
complexity and the essence of this uh, assay. MIT is used uh, to detect or quantify substances that activate uh, monocytic cells to release endogenous uh, mediators of inflammation, uh, such as the pro-inflammatory cytokines. And these pro-inflammatory cytokines, as we know, as you know, have a role in fever pathogenic, pathogenesis. Uh, the activation of these cells uh, happen, happen after the sensing of pyrogenic substances. And this method is suitable uh, uh, as a replacement for the rabbit pyrogen test after a product specific validation. In next slides, we will go through how the procedure to understand uh, how to move uh, within the variable parameters uh, characterizing the tests. And even if these uh, uh, variables stand for uh, high complexity. On the other hand, uh, they make this assay very adaptable. Basically, the method consists in the simulation of a given cell source which contain a monocyte fraction or in the simulation of monocytic cell line with a product, in this case with a vaccine. And after an overnight incubation, the release of endogenous mediators of inflammation, namely the pre-inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1 beta, or interleukin-6 is measured in cancer supernatants. Um, there are, um, it seems easy, but there are few critical aspects that should be considered for a successful application of this assay. And who are the main actors of MIT? the cell source, the readout, the method for detecting the readout, and the product. Let's start with the cell source. Cells that can be employed for MIT are monocytes or sources containing a monocytic fraction, uh, such as the whole blood, or uh, mononuclear cells that can be isolated from blood. Uh, or again, we can use uh, monocytic cell lines, namely uh, the monomax 6 uh, uh, or the ATHP1. But how should we choose uh, the proper cell source? When a broader panel of pyrogens could potentially be present, or when the pyrogen is a known isolated primary cells or the whole blood are more appropriate given the um, wide portfolio of receptors present in these primary cells that are able to sense a plethora of non-endotoxin contaminants as well as the endotoxin. However, uh, these two cell sources uh, could expose to the risk uh, of uh, reduced reproducibility due to the uh, variability existing among different donors. On the contrary, the use uh, of cell lines prevents donor variability issue, and it is indicated uh, in the case of known pyrogens, uh, as for example, those activating uh, the TOLEC receptor 2 or the TOLEC receptor 4. Moving to some technical aspects, I would like to focus on the workflow for the isolation of mononuclear cells uh, from peripheral blood. As you can see uh, in the slide, the procedure starts from a blood bag. At this step, uh, we can decide if using whole blood or if proceeding uh, with the isolation of PBMC. Um, anyway, the use of a uh, proper septic technique that avoids contamination is critical. Thus, before using uh, this blood, uh, the blood, it is important to put the uh, bag in uh, the biosafety cabinet, to clean the bag with the uh, ethanol, 70% ethanol or isopropanol. And uh, after this step, we can open the bag and uh, um, uh, transfer the blood in, the ster in a sterile tube. To isolate PBMC, blood must be stratified on a density gradient media that allow the uh, separation of the different components uh, of the blood. Uh, this tube is put in a centrifuge and we perform a, a centrifuge without break and acceleration to avoid the mixing of blood with the separation medium. And after the separation, the different components of the blood stratify based on their uh, weight on the gradient. And the PBMC uh, can be uh, recovered by aspirating this ring that forms at the interface between the plasma in the upper phase and the separation medium. 
we previously said that one issue that can occur uh, in using primary cells is the donor to donor natural variability. But we can mitigate and try to control this variability by using qualified cells. This means that MIT should be conducted only with primary cells that have been previously tested to assess their quality. Moreover, once the quality of the cell source uh, um, has been proven, it would be convenient to use this cell source uh, as long as possible. Uh, thus, uh, uh, the creation of, this, of a cell bank for long-term storage of primary cells uh, is uh, very important. As already underlined for the isolation of PDMC, also in the step of uh, freezing, uh, it is important to uh, use uh, um, a proper aseptic technique. And another aspect that should be considered before proceeding with the cryopreservation is the optimal number of cells uh, um, that must be um, stored in each vial. This parameter indeed may influence uh, the viability of the cells uh, and may also account for the formation of clamp uh, um, that, for example, happen when uh, we store uh, high, uh, uh, too, uh, a too high number of cells. Uh, for PBMC, uh, an optimal number is between 5 and 20 million of cells per ml. But to establish a cell bank, we need to optimize a protocol for cell freezing. So uh, soon after the isolation, the cells must be suspended in a proper freezing medium. And then um, it is important to um, store this uh, cell suspension in a working aliquot. Uh, next, this working aliquot will be placed at minus 80 and uh, uh, transferred after a, an overnight uh, storage at minus 80 in liquid nitrogen tank for the long-term storage. The medium employed for freezing uh, is frequently constituted by uh, human serum or fetal calf uh, bovine serum uh, combined with a, a cryoprotectant agent such as the DMSO that, as you know, as you know uh, avoid ice, ice crystal formation and protect cells uh, um, from uh, both the osmotic stresses or uh, uh, membrane damage uh, during the procedure of towing. Um, there are some commercially uh, ready to use freezing media. Uh, this uh, uh, media can be formulated with uh, fetal uh, bovine serum or um, they can be also completely synthetic. Another challenging parameter to consider is the freezing rate. Uh, indeed, uh, the slow freezing is essential to ensure both the viability of the cells uh, and the integrity. To this purpose, uh, we can use controlled rate freezer um, or uh, isopropanol freezing container that can be employed for the overnight uh, storage of cells at minus 80. However, as we um, said in the previous slide, uh, for the long term storage, uh, we need extremely low temperature. Um, and as it is highly recommended to uh, store cells in liquid nitrogen until needed. Once the cells uh, are required, the cryopreserved PBMC can be towed and used in dying application. And uh, um, for a proper management of these uh, storage aliquots, it is important to have uh, an inventory, an updated inventory of these cells uh, aliquots. Thus, to recap, uh, using the appropriate cryopreservation medium, cell concentration, freezing rate, and storage in liquid nitrogen, ensure that PBMC maintain an optimal viability and functionality upon towing. And uh, if the uh, slow freezing is recommended for PBMC cryopreservation, an efficient towing procedure requires a rapid increase of temperature. Thus, before uh, uh, taking our aliquots from the liquid nitrogen, it is important to prepare a towing medium, to warm it, and to distribute it in uh, conic tubes that we will use uh, throughout the uh, towing procedure. Uh, for instance, for a, a single vial of PBMC, a 15 ml conic tube is sufficient for performing the towing. Uh, now we will uh, uh, go through the step of this uh, 
towing uh, procedure. Um, we should remove the cryovial from the liquid nitrogen storage tank and uh, uh, put this uh, cryovial in dry ice uh, uh, until we arrive in our laboratory or close to a water bed. At this stage, uh, we have to avoid uh, the exposure of the cryovial to room temperature in order to uh, avoid to um, cause uh, damages in the cells. To rap rapidly to PBMC, um, we can place the cryovial in uh, a 37 degree water bed and tow the cells uh, um, until a, a little piece of ice uh, remain in the cryovial. Then after wiping the outside of the cryovial with 70% uh, ethanol or isopropanol, we can transfer the uh, cryovial into the bisafety hood. Um, once in the biosafety hood, we can uh, add one ml of the warm and um, the warm and with medium directly into the cryovials tropwise, and uh, then uh, slowly transfer the cell suspension uh, as always uh, dropwise in the conic tube prefilled with the warm towing medium. And then um, we can wash the uh, cryovial with an additional ml of towing medium in order to recover uh, uh, as much as possible all the cell present in, the, um, in our halicots. Now we can uh, proceed by mixing our uh, cell suspension by inverting the tube uh, several times and centrifuge this tube at room temperature at 300 uh, G for 10 minutes. At the end uh, of the uh, centrifuge, uh, we uh, discard the supernatants and by leaving a, uh, leave a, a small amount of liquid uh, in the tube in order to um, uh, resuspend by gently flicking the tube to resuspend the pellet. Um, then we repeat again this was washing step and at the end of the second washing step, we can resuspend the cells uh, with the culture medium. Now we have to move to count these cells to understand how many cells we recovered and um, importantly to understand the percentage of viability of these cells. Uh, to perform this, uh, um, uh, this count, we use, uh, we dilute the cell suspension with the tripan blue exclusion dye uh, that allow us to exclude the cells uh, from the count and we evaluate the percentage of viable cells. This percentage can be used uh, um, for monitoring the, the performance of both the cryopreservation and the towing procedure. Um, we count the cells with, uh, uh, by using a hemocytometer and based on cell number, we adjust the volume to the decided cell concentration with cell culture medium to use the cells uh, uh, for uh, MIT and uh, for MIT. Moving now to the uh, readouts of MIT, as you know, endotoxins and endotoxin and non-endotoxin pyrogens are strong simulator of the pro-inflammatory cascade and in particular of the cytokines uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 6, the so-called endogenous mediators of inflammation. Um, tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 beta are the first cytokines to be released and then they promote the secretion of IL-6. Together, these cytokines uh, uh, constitute the orchestrator of the pro-inflammatory phases uh, of, of sepsis. Um, however, in addition to the kinetic of release, uh, the choice of the more appropriate readout strongly depends uh, from the cell type that we employed in uh, our MIT. And uh, which method do we use uh, uh, for readout detection in MIT? The most diffused and common methodology employed uh, um, is the uh, ELISA, the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Um, in this uh, format of the assay, namely the sandwich ELISA, uh, as you for sure know, two sets of antibody are used to detect uh, secreted products. The first one, the capture antibody, is an antibody raised against the antigen of interest and is used to coat the plate. The second antibody, namely detection antibody, binds to any target antigen of interest already bound to the plate and it is labeled with an enzyme, usually horse radish peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase. 
this enzyme reacts with a substrate thus resulting in a chromogenic reaction that converts the substrate into a colored product which can be measured using a plate reader. But the reason uh, behind the widespread use of this uh, format, particular format of ELISA, is that we have the possibility to manage almost all the steps of the procedure to make our ELISA protocol well fitting with the requirement of the, in our case of European Pharmacopoeia, for the application of MIT to a specific product. In particular, a successful ELISA procedure depends on the choice of uh, reagents, including type of plate for coating, antibodies, substrate, as well as on the definition of incubation time and temperature incubation of each step of the procedure. Finally, uh, an, an element, uh, an important element of complexity that we have to consider when we are approaching to MIT is the product. And the product specific optimization is essential considering the broad composition of vaccines for human use, starting from the type of antigen that can be present in the final formulation. As you know, we have live attenuated vaccine, inactivated vaccine, purified antigen vaccine, recombinant DNA vaccine, and more recently, mRNA vaccine. To further increase uh, the complexity of these formulations, antigens are combined with adjuvants that improve the immune response to the vaccine by making this response stronger, faster, and more sustained over time. Uh, an example of which is the, uh, aluminum are the aluminum salts. In this table, we can find a list of adjuvants present in a licensed vaccine that have been classified according to, the, to their mechanism of, of action, namely delivery system, immune potentiators such as the agonist of toll-like receptors, combined adjuvants that usually are uh, water oil emulsion and currently present, for example, in malaria and herpes zoster vaccine, and lastly, the mucosal adjuvants. Moreover, um, other components, depending on the type of vaccine, can be present in the final formulation of the product. This includes a stabilizer to keep vaccine components stable, um, as well as trace amount of other substances used in the manufacturing process, uh, such as of albumin or, uh, or uh, antibiotics. Nonetheless, by focusing on the active substance of the vaccine, we can distinguish among products that possess or not intrinsic pyrogenicity, which means that the antigen by itself is able or not to some extent to stimulate uh, the fever cascade. Thus, based on product properties, different analysis methods may be employed uh, when we face with the MIT product specific optimization. Let's move now to the methods uh, described in the European Pharmacopoeia. Uh, to meet all this variability, uh, MIT Monograph describes uh, three different methods, namely the quantitative test method A, the semi-quantitative test method B, and the reference lot comparison test method C. Before uh, moving, uh, with, uh, moving on with the description of these uh, three methods, I believe it is useful to introduce or refresh for who already know them uh, some definition. The first one is the limit of detection. Um, although some assay may state that an assay has a dynamic range that uh, extends uh, from zero concentration to some upper limit, Typically, an assay is simply not capable of accurately measuring analyte concentration down to zero. A sufficient analyte concentration must be present to uh, produce an analytical signal that can be reliably be distinguished by, uh, from the analytical noise. And the limit of detection is that sufficient analyte concentration, the lowest analyte concentration, likely to be reliably distinguished from the say blank and, and at which the detection is feasible. For MIT, uh, LOD is defined as the endotoxin concentration corresponding to the cutoff value, 
namely the mean of optical density value of blank cells, plus three times the standard deviation of this optical density uh, value. And given the capacity of MIT to detect both endotoxin and non-endotoxin contaminant, LOD must be defined also for non-endotoxin contaminants. Another important parameter for the assay is the sensitivity. Assay sensitivity corresponds to the lowest endotoxin and non-endotoxin concentration that can be accurately detected in several analytical sessions. What is the difference between LOD and assay sensitivity? Assay sensitivity corresponds to a value of endotoxin or non-endotoxin uh, standard curve found in the beginning of the linear part of this curve, and is not a calculated value as LOD. Instead, the contaminant limit concentration is the uh, criterion used for the pass-fail decision of the test, as suggested by the name, is the maximum amount of equivalent of an endotoxin unit that a product that con uh, can contain to pass the test. CLC is calculated as uh, the ratio among the threshold of pyrogenic dose per kilogram of body mass and the maximum recommended dose of product per kilogram of body mass. The last definition that we need to keep in mind is the maximum valid dilution. MBD is the uh, maximum dilution of the product that we can use in, this, in the assay, and it is defined as the concentration at, uh, of the product at which the contaminant limit concentration can be determined. The formula for MBD calculation is the ratio among the CLC multiplied to the concentration of the product product and the LOD of the assay. Moving now to the three methods described in the European Pharmacopoeia, the method A or quantitative test is intended for products that possess a parallel response respect to the standard endotoxin curve. Thus, by using this method, the product will be compared to a standard endotoxin dose response curve. In this table, uh, this table summarizes uh, the conditions that must be ins inserted in the layout of the SAE based on European pharmacopoeia when we apply the method A. In addition to three dilution of the product, the method foresee also the insertion of the product spiked with the endotoxin. What is important to know is that the test must comply with the criteria of linearity for the endotoxin standard curve. The product should contain an amount of endotoxin, uh, of endotoxin equivalent less the CLC, and that we, when we spike into the product a given quantity of endotoxin, the recovery should fall within the range of 50 to 100%. The semi-quantitative method B is intended for those products showing a, a not parallel response respect to the standard endotoxin. As for the quantitative method A, the product is compared with a standard endotoxin curve. But what is the difference? Method B is a semi-quantitative method thus the pyrogen level of the product will be expressed as above or below a threshold value and not as an exact value. And this threshold is the CLC. Similarly to method A, when we spike into the product a given quantity of endotoxin, the recovery should fall within the range of 50 to 100%. Lastly, the method C, namely the reference lot comparison test uh, intended for those products where pyrogens are an integral part of the product. Uh, does the product contain a certain level of endotoxin and or non-endotoxin pyrogens? In those cases, the product is compared with a validated lot of the preparation to be examined and the test will give back a measure expressed as a relative pyrogen unit. Here, uh, there is the, a table with the uh, test conditions to be included in the assay layout uh, to apply the method C. And uh, the formula uh, stated in the European Pharmacopoeia for the calculation of relative pyrogen units. Thus, to recap, method A and B 
uh, are intended for those products uh, that do not possess intrinsic pyrogenicity, while method C is intended for inherently pyrogenic products. But uh, in view on the, of the uh, planned suppression of the RPT from the European Pharmacopoeia, important revisions uh, to keep the chapter 2.6.30 up to date and to support all users are ongoing to facilitate the widest implementation of the map. Uh, what are the biggest changes of MIT monograph? One of uh, of the main revisions relies on the calculation of the product maximum value dilution. To make uh, um, MVD calculation more consistent uh, and comparable among uh, different MIT setups, uh, the formula will be likely changed considering the say sensitivity instead of LOD, since a say sensitivity, as we uh, said before, is a point of the standard curve and not a calculated value as LOD. Moreover, uh, several user uh, reported issues in uh, fully complying with the criteria for the endotoxin standard curve currently present in the monograph. Thus, uh, less strict criteria have been uh, inserted as uh, parallel parallelism requirement present in method A that has been deleted. But uh, probably the most important change that will be introduced in the new version of the MIT chapter is the merge of the quantitative method A with the semi-quantitative method B in the novel semi-quantitative method 1, intended for those products non-inherently pyrogenic. Um, thus, in the new chapter, the user will find two methods, one for non-inherently pyrogenic products and one for product possessing uh, intrinsic pyrogenicity, namely the method two. The last uh, change uh, referred to the dose of endotoxin to be spiked into the product uh, tested with method one. The amount of uh, reference standard endotoxin will be changed from two times the LOD to a dose of endotoxin equal to or near to the middle of endotoxin standard curve. Uh, let's move in, let's move now to a uh, practical application of MIT uh, and in particular uh, uh, we, now we will focus on our experience uh, of optimization of the monocyte uh, activation test. Um, we um, performed this optimization for the uh, tick-borne encephalitis virus uh, vaccine. Uh, this vaccine is formulated that, uh, as an inactivated virus uh, absorbed to aluminum hydroxide and uh, among the tests is uh, for see on the final lot of the product uh, by the uh, European Pharmacopoeia, uh, as you can see, there is the test of pyrogen on the uh, final lot of the product. Um, and the monograph states that the final lot of the product must comply with the test for pyrogens conducted in rabbit. Uh, the tick-borne encephalitis virus uh, uh, belongs to the flaviviride family. It is a positive single-stranded uh, RNA virus uh, possessing uh, a small envelope and three structural proteins. And uh, uh, looking to uh, this structure, there are no molecules uh, able to intrinsically confer pyrogenicity to the drug product. Since the virus itself in its inactivated form constitutes the active substance of the vaccine, we can say that the product does not possess intrinsic pyrogenicity. However, as we have just seen, pharmacopoeia foresee the test for pyrogen among the quality tests that must be done on the final formulation. And the reason uh, behind these uh, requirements lies on the uh, manufacturing process of the product. Indeed, there are uh, critical steps in the production process of the vaccine, um, namely the embryo harvest from chicken eggs, uh, uh, or the propagation of the virus that could entail the risk uh, uh, of bacterial, viral, as well as uh, cellular contaminants to entering the final product. 
we get uh, in contact with the MIT uh, through a project, uh, the uh, Vaccine Batch to Vaccine Batch Comparison for Consistency Testing Project. It was uh, a wide ranking collaborative project uh, founded by the Innovative Medicine Initiative. And the principal objective of this uh, um, uh, big uh, public private consortium was to provide the proof of concept of consistency approach for the batch release of vaccine by means of in vitro analytical methods. The ambition of this uh, project was to develop and to optimize non-animal based model for demonstrating the consistencies of different batches, the safety and their efficacy. And accordingly, one of the objective, uh, objectives of a back-to-back -back project was to optimize the monocyte activation test for the tick borne encephalitis vaccine as an alternative for the replacement of the tests conducted in RAPID. We decided to uh, approach MIT optimization for the TBEV vaccine by using as, as a cell source uh, cryopreserved PBMC. And why did we, uh, why did we choose uh, to use PBMC? PPMC has been chosen since, uh, um, although the product is low pyrogenic, based on the manufacturing process, several, several types of pyrogens could potentially be present in the final formulation. Thus, we firstly optimized a protocol for PBMC cryopreservation, and then we evaluated the quality of cryopreserved PBMC by assessing their viability and their ability uh, to respond to the reference standard endotoxin over time. This was important to understand for how long time we could use this uh, cell source without losing sensitivity in our assay. By assessing uh, cell viability and uh, the PBMC response uh, at 6, 12, and 18 months after cryopreservation, we found that up to 18 months, uh, the viability of PBMC cryopreserved with an optimized protocol remains equal to or up to 90%. And that the response to reference standard endotoxin is uh, uh, stable and reproducible uh, until 18 months. Of not the response uh, to the reference standard endotoxin has been evaluated as the quantity of IL-6 released by cells after simulation. And these details bring, uh, detail bring us to the second step of the optimization, the choice of the readout. How and why did we choose IL-6 uh, among the different endogenous pyrogens? To make a choice, uh, we toured uh, uh, PBMC and we stimulated the cells uh, with two doses of the uh, reference standard endotoxin, uh, as well as with two non-endotoxin pyrogens, uh, namely uh, the toll-like receptor agonist uh, 848, uh, is an agonist of toll-like receptor 78, and FSL1, uh, an agonist of toll-like receptor 2. We measured uh, in culture supernatants uh, the amount uh, of the cytokines tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1 beta, uh, interleukin 1 beta, sorry, interleukin 6. And uh, um, we found that uh, PBMC, um, in, in this PBMC, we found that IL6 is the one more robustly secreted, thus, we chosen IL6 as the readout of our assay. However, this is not sufficient to successfully optimize the MIT for a product. Indeed, uh, uh, the European Pharmacopoeia foresee the execution of some preparatory tests before testing the product with MIT. One of them is the test for the assurance of criteria for the endotoxin standard curve to identify the linear range of response of the assay to endotoxin. The test is performed by using four replicates of at least four standard endotoxin concentrations. Then we will assess whether the experimental condition employed allow uh, linear response to the different reference standard endotoxin doses by evaluating the regression of the response and the not deviation of the responses from linearity. This graph has been constructed by using the optical density value 
of IL-6 obtained at four different doses of the uh, reference standard and the toxin. As you can see in uh, this uh, table, um, the regression of this curve is statistically significant, while the uh, probability of non-linear response is not statistically significant since this value is up to 0.05. This curve and therefore the experimental condition employed uh, for the test comply with the requirement of the pharmacopoeia for the preparatory test assurance of criteria for the endodoxin standard curve. The second preparatory test is the test for interferon factors, which means uh, which aims to uh, verify whether the product interferes with the detection of the endotoxin contaminants. The test is conducted by spiding a justified and fixed concentration of the reference standard endotoxin into the uh, into dilution of the vaccine. Then the spiked preparations and the unspiked vaccine will be used to simulate cells. Thus, by using the optical density value obtained for the uh, cytokine IL-6, we calculated the percentage of uh, uh, reference standard endotoxin recovery at different uh, vaccine dilution. Uh, to pass the test, the recovery percentage must fall within the range of 50 to 100 percent. In particular, for the TBEV vaccine, uh, this is the commercial name, and Sepur, the recovery is within uh, the range uh, starting from dilution 1 to 6. This means that the product does not uh, mask endotoxin detection starting from this dose. However, uh, since the antigen is adsorbed on aluminum hydroxide, we evaluated also the recovery um, uh, by using excipient only. And in this case, uh, the successful uh, recovery starts from those 1 to 12.5. Another uh, test foreseen by the European Pharmacopoeia is the test uh, interference in the detection system, uh, which aims to verify whether the vaccine interferes at a technical level with the ELISA procedure. The test is conducted by spiking a fixed amount of the product into the standard recombinant protein curve inserted in the ELISA plate. In this case, the acceptance criterion to pass the test is that the interference of the product must fall within plus or minus 20%. To calculate this percentage, the uh, optical density value of IL6 has uh, been uh, used in uh, the case uh, of MIT optimization for Ensepur vaccine. Uh, the test has been uh, conducted with five uh, different vaccine doses. Uh, namely uh, 1 to 3, uh, 1 to 6, 1 to 12.5, 1 to 25, and 1 to 50. In all the analyzed uh, uh, conditions, the product does not interfere with the detection system since the interference is within the range established by the uh, European Pharmacopoeia. The last preparatory assay is the validation of the method for its capacity to respond to non-endotoxin pyrogens by verifying whether the experimental conditions employed for the assay ensure a linear response to different doses of two non-endotoxin pyrogens and uh, by verifying whether the vaccine interferes with the detection of uh, uh, at least one of these uh, non-endotoxin pyrogens uh, as we have just seen for the reference standard endotoxin. Accordingly, for the optimization uh, of this uh, uh, assay for the TBEV vaccine, a linear dose response curve was constructed by using the uh, synthetic agonist for the TOLEC receptor 2, FS, namely FSL1, and by using different doses of the agonist of TOLEC receptor 7, 8, or 8, 4, 8. In both cases, the probability for linear regression, uh, regression as well as uh, for nonlinear response has been calculated. And by looking at the table, as you can see, for both curves, the linear regression was significant, while the nonlinearity was not significant, thus uh, indicating that the experimental condition that we employed are suitable uh, for measuring non-endotoxin pyrogen content. 
Finally, uh, the recovery of at least one of the two non-endotoxin contaminants uh, um, was evaluated by spiking uh, into the different doses in different doses of the Tibet vaccine, uh, a fixed amount of the um, uh, rate for eight. Uh, the recovery of a rate for eight falls within uh, the range of 50 to 100 percent, starting from product dilution one to uh, 25, uh, and by using excipient only uh, by uh, starting from dilution one to uh, 50. This means that the product can be employed with the established experimental condition from uh, dilution one to 50. Thus the LOD and the sensitivity of the MIT optimized for the Tibet vaccine has been, uh, have been calculated for the uh, reference standard endotoxin as well as for rate for rate and FSL1. Moreover, to establish the vaccine doses to be inserted in the final layout, the maximum valid dilution of the product has been calculated by applying the formula described in the Euro and pharmacopoeia, and therefore we firstly calculated the CLC as the ratio between the threshold um, of uh, endotoxin dose used for parental administered products and the dose of vaccine established for a single administration. Uh, thus, the CLC uh, was uh, uh, calculated as uh, 100 endotoxin unit per ml. Even if the vaccine is administered subcutaneously, uh, intramuscularly, sorry, we decided to use the key value for parenteral administration since this uh, limit is clearly stated uh, in the European Pharmacopoeia. And we are for sure in, uh, let's say, safe window. Uh, also considering that uh, the anti vaccine is mainly administered in uh, pediatric population. And the calculation as inserted in uh, European Pharmacopoeia uh, was uh, applied also for this uh, product and results to be um, 1 to uh, 2,700. Uh, However, uh, based on uh, uh, the experience, uh, um, our experience of optimization, we proposed a new calculation for the MVD that considers the assay sensitivity instead of LOD, uh, since the assay sensitivity um, can be uh, determined in different assay with high accuracy and consistency with respect to LOD. In this case, uh, by using uh, this uh, new proposed formula, uh, the uh, MVD for this product uh, is uh, uh, 1 to uh, 1,000. Thus, based on the data obtained in preliminary tests, we established the final plate layout for the TBEV vaccine by defining the three doses of the TBEV vaccine to be tested alone or in combination uh, with the uh, endotoxin spike in. We defined a five-point dilution uh, endotoxin standard curve, and moreover, uh, the plates con contain some uh, negative control, the cell blank uh, as a negative control for the cells and the ELISA blank, and as positive control for the ELISA procedure, a recombinant IL-6 at the concentration of 600 picogram uh, per ml. And uh, um, all these uh, um, experience of optimization is described uh, in this uh, paper that we published uh, a couple of years ago on Altex Journal in collaboration uh, with uh, um, other colleagues of our institute. And um, so if you want to, uh, to catch other details about this uh, optimization, you can find it uh, in this uh, paper.